Name a type of arthritis that tends to take longer to diagnose in women more than men. In fact, it was actually felt to affect men more than women, but now we know it affects them the same. It just takes us longer to pick it up in women. If you guessed ankylosing spondylitis, you would be right, and it was once known as a male disease. So many physicians often don't think of this diagnosis in women, and the evidence supports that diagnostic delays in women can take eight to nine years compared to five to six in men. They're more likely to receive an incorrect diagnosis like chronic fatigue syndrome, mechanical back pain, or fibromyalgia. So let's talk about what is ankylosing spondylitis, the pathophysiology, how we diagnose it, how we treat it, and why there is such a gender bias in the diagnosis. Yesterday, I spoke about the case of a 24-year-old woman who came to her doctor with about a year of lower back pain. Her pain seemed to be worse in the morning when she first woke up, but as she began to move throughout the day, her pain improved. She felt like her back was 80 years old. She received the diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis and she's not alone, so let's break it down. Ankylosing spondylitis, or AS for short, is a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease that affects the axial skeleton. That means your spine and your sacroiliac joints. But here's the kicker, it's also a systemic disease, so it can affect things like your eyes, your gut, your lungs, and sometimes your heart. It usually starts in adults under 40 years old, and the back pain is not mechanical. What does that mean? That means it's not like pain with a disc issue or a pulled muscle. Instead, it's an inflammatory type pain. It's worse in the morning when you first wake up and it lasts for 30 to 60 minutes and it gets better with movement. It can wake you up at night and stiffness is a major clue. Whereas mechanical back pain or pain when you pull a muscle or injure the disc is usually the opposite. It's fine in the morning when you've been resting, but as you move throughout the day or use your back, the pain gets worse. Over time in AS patients, the inflammation can actually lead to autofusion of your spine, meaning instead of having a moving and flowing spine, your spine actually can grow together over time, a condition that's called bamboo spine, and it's one of the hallmark features of AS. That means flexibility is lost, posture is affected, and your pain becomes chronic. So what's happening at the cellular level? Let me explain how this condition starts. Like in all autoimmune conditions, your body's immune system begins to attack itself. The body's immune system begins to attack the entheses. That's the area where tendons and ligaments insert into bone. That leads to a condition called enthesitis, which is where there's inflammation at that insertion site of where the tendon attaches to the bone. And eventually, over time, that leads to bone formation at those insertion site, which leads to autofusion because now the ligaments no longer move on the bone and the bone becomes fused to the level where it attaches. So over time, these patient's spine loses its mobility and they become very rigid and stiff. It's heavily associated with a gene called HLA-B27. But that also means not everybody with ankylosing spondylitis will have this gene and not everybody with this gene will have ankylosing spondylitis. There's an association there, but it's not 100% exclusive. So how do you diagnose it? It can actually be really tricky, and that's where there's delays in the diagnosis, especially in women, because it tends to present less aggressively and is often mistaken for other things. So here's what we look for when we're trying to make this diagnosis. The history and clinical clues we already went through, that inflammatory type back pain, so the pain that's worse when you wake up in the morning and gets better with movement. The onset of this pain is before age 40 and they often have alternating buttock pain. Because it affects the SI joints, the pain is often in the PSIS region called the Fortin's finger test. And that is a place on the lower back right here or right here. That's where you take your thumb and you can put your thumb right over the region of pain and that's why we call it the Fortin's finger test. So it's usually right here on someone. The pain in AS can often be nonspecific so it doesn't have to be right in that region but that's often where people with inflammation in their SI joints have pain. The other thing to look for is a family history of ankylosing spondylitis because it is a genetic disease. 
What we look for in laboratory studies is an elevated ESR and CRP, which are inflammatory markers in our bloodstream, as well as that genetic test of the HLA B27. The x-rays may show sacroiliitis, but often years after the diagnosis has started. The same thing goes with seeing the bamboo spine on the x-rays because that only is seen after the spine has begun fusing and that's years after the condition has already set in. You want to catch the disease before it shows up on x-ray because x-rays will show when those joints are already becoming calcified. If you can catch it early, you can prevent the spontaneous fusion. That's the game changer. MRI may be more sensitive early on when the inflammation is first starting before those x-ray changes appear. And there's a classification called the ASDAS. Let's talk about how we treat. AS does not have a cure, but treatment can dramatically improve the quality of life. The first line of treatments is going to be non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines like naproxen or endomethacin. Physical therapy is extremely important to work on posture exercises, extension exercises, and flexibility. Here's another important thing to keep in mind. Avoiding nicotine use is extremely important because nicotine use will exacerbate the disease. If NSAIDs don't control the symptoms, biologics may be considered. That includes medicines like TNL-alpha inhibitors and IL-17 inhibitors. These are typically prescribed and managed by rheumatology. And these biologics don't just reduce inflammation, they help preserve function and stop the fusion from progressing. Now I mentioned earlier that AS is a systemic disease, so other parts of the body that can be affected and that you need to screen for are going to be the peripheral joints like hips, shoulders, knees, and it tends to affect larger joints more than smaller joints. You want to check for enthesitis, and that's a hallmark of these spondyloarthropathies. Heel pain, patella insertional pain, the costasternal junction where the ribs connect to the sternum. You want to check the eyes because anterior uveitis affects 40% of AS patients. It's usually a unilateral red painful eye. It can be recurrent and it can actually precede the spinal symptoms. It can coexist with inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. In severe cases, it can actually affect the heart, cause aortic root dilation, even conduction abnormalities like AV block. Here's a good mnemonic to go by so you can pause the screen if you want to save this. And it's also really important to screen for depression and fatigue in these patients and address them because this is a whole person disease. And here's the part that I really want to hit home. Women are often underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed because the disease can present more subtly in them, less spinal fusion, more widespread pain, and it could be misdiagnosis, fibromyalgia, or stress. We have to do better for these women because they are often gaslit in the medical community, made to be felt like their pain isn't real, and then go on years later to have the diagnosis made, and then they feel ignored, and then they feel let down by the system. That can then increase their depression and mistrust of the healthcare system for years to come. And that's why I shared this important case of this woman today. The diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis was made and she was started on treatment. So if you're under 40, dealing with chronic back stiffness, it gets better when you move, but worse when you rest, do not ignore it. It may not just be bad posture. It might be your immune system talking to you. So make sure that you talk to your doctor. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.